Hello, you are welcome to another video on engineering math. Today we have to learn how to find the, all the second order partial derivatives of um, z from here. Okay, so solution. So if we have z to be equal to x cos y minus y cos x, in fact it's very very dark and late over here, that's why my shadow is in the so uh, kindly um, bear with me. Okay. So what we do is that we, we, we first differentiate with respect to x. Now the function that we differentiate with respect to x, we differentiate with respect to x and y. And those will be the first two other two first other partial derivatives. Now we go and differentiate with respect to y. Now the function what we differentiated to y, that is what we had and we differentiated with respect to y. We will go and differentiate that y again with respect to x and y. Then we are done. So for the second order partial derivatives, we always get um, four results. Okay, so let's do that. So let's differentiate. So this is the symbol for, for partial derivative. We don't use d like this, okay? So when you differentiate z partially with respect to x, when you are differentiating with respect to it, it means that any other variable there which is not x is considered as a constant. So here y is a constant. So we differentiate x alone. We differentiate x, we get 1. So the answer will be cos y for the differential of this. Minus, we differentiate cos, you get negative sign. Right? We differentiate cos x, you get negative sign x. So that negative cancels out with this negative to give positive y sign x. Now this x we have, this answer we have, we are going to differentiate this answer with respect to x and y. Okay? So let's do that. So we are, let's differentiate with respect to x. So let's differentiate z with respect to x. So what this means is that we are differentiating the answer we have with respect to x. So this will give zero because it's a constant. When you differentiate the constant, you get zero. When you differentiate sin x, you get cos x. So here is y cos x. Okay, now let's go and differentiate z with respect to y. Sorry. We are differentiating z with respect to y. So when we differentiate it with respect to y, this is the answer, this is what we are going to differentiate. So when you differentiate cos y, you get negative sine y. Now when you differentiate the y here, you get 1 with respect to x. So plus when you differentiate this with respect to y, you get sine x. Okay. So these are the first two second order partial derivatives. Now let's continue. So, if we have z, so let's say again, if z is equal to x cos y minus y cos x. So, let's differentiate z now with respect to y. Initially, we differentiated with respect to x. So, now let's differentiate it with respect to y. So, when we differentiate z with respect to y, x will be a constant here. So we differentiate cos y, we get negative x sin y. Minus, we are differentiating it with respect to y. So we won't differentiate cos x. So we differentiate y, get 1. So that will be 1 cos x, which is the same as cos x. Good. Now this answer, so this is the first order partial derivative. So we have to differentiate this answer with respect to x and y. So let's first differentiate it with respect to x. So we are differentiating this with respect to x. So we differentiate with respect to x. We, di we, we differentiate the x alone. That will give us y. So minus sin y. Then we we'll differentiate this one with respect to x. Differential of cos x is negative sin x. That negative cancels out with this negative to give us positive. Now, we have to go and differentiate with respect to y now. So we differentiate this with respect to y. So we differentiate with respect to y. Differential of sin y will give cos y. So minus x cos y. 
minus x cos y. Now, when we differentiate this with respect to y, we get 0. Okay, we get 0 because the cos x is a constant, and differential of the constant will give uh, 0. So let's look at something we call the Clairaut's theorem. Clairaut's theorem. So Clairaut's theorem says that if you have a function that is continuous, and then its first order partial derivative is also continuous, then the second order partial derivative, with respect to the other variable, will always be the same. So you can see that the answer for this minus sine y plus sine x is the same as minus sine y plus sine x. And the person who said that this will always be the case is called Clairaut. This theorem, that's what he stated that. Whenever you have a function here, z, which is continuous, and this first order partial derivative is also continuous, then the second order partial derivative with respect to the other variable will also be, um, will always be the same. Okay, yes. So that's how, so over here, the answer that we are looking for, uh, we are looking for this answer. Uh, we are also looking for this answer. We are looking for this answer. And then we are also looking for this answer. So these are the second order partial derivative of this function we are given. One, two, three, four. For second order partial derivative, you always get four answers. Okay, so thank you for your time. It's been good. Um, um, studying with you and all the best to you and don't think it's difficult it's very simple just follow the protocols okay i believe you can do it and you need to believe yourself as well me believing you alone is not enough but you need to believe yourself because even if um i don't believe in you and then you believe in yourself that's great but if you don't believe you can do it and i believe that that is not helping okay so i believe you can do it you also need to believe yourself and study hard and you are going to make it i trust that